Mr. Redfane, known also as the Devourer or the Big Bad Wolf, you stand before the Court of Fables for a supposed violation of the most important law, the law of constancy. May the trial begin. The words echo through the dark and quiet courtroom, filled with beings of all shapes and sizes. All eyes locked into one place. The beast, standing in a spotlight, guided carefully by four men behind his back. His fur, still covered with dried blood, as well as his teeth, which he doesn't hesitate to show to the Supreme Judge. His eyes, not for a second leaving the imposing figure before him, glitter with madness. Let us start with the testimony of the accuser. Joachim Jäger, please step forward. A tall man in hunting clothes stands up from his bench and looks up to the judge. Mr. Jäger, please inform us of what has happened. I will gladly do that, Your Honor. It was a normal day, like any other, and I went hunting in the forest when I saw the wolf. He was running at me. I won't bore you with the hunter's speech, for it was long, chaotic, and incomplete. Rather, I'll tell you myself of the day's events. It was the day little Red Riding Hood was supposed to visit her grandmother. As she passed through the forest, she met a wolf to whom she gave away every detail of her journey. The wolf disappeared, and she went on. Later that day, when she knocked on the cottage door, she heard nothing. She knocked again, but still no answer. So she opened the door and screamed. In front of her, in a pool of blood, lay a body barely recognizable and torn to pieces. And over it, there stood the wolf, fangs red, eyes glowing, hate radiating from every inch of his body like fire. And as he approached, he said only one thing. Never again! <laughs> Poor thing. When he finally let the desecrated corpse of the little girl from his jaws, he turned his head to the forest. For his final prey, the hunter, the man managed to hold back for a few minutes and, almost dead, informed the court, who then quickly pacified the wolf and brought him to the tribe. Let's return there. Mr. Redbane, how do you defend? Fuck you, that's how! I did it! You know that very well. But do you know why? Have you ever given it the slightest bit of thought? What it does to someone? Being thrown into the water again and again and again! Oh, this is all just a dark and elaborate theater play. Mr. 
Mr. Redfane, do you dare to insult the very foundation of our world? Fairy tales serve an important role for the cosmos and for the children. The children, yeah. Well, let the children know how I tore the two into pieces. Let them know that I finally tasted their blood. And let them know that every time they close the book, I drown. Not a sound can be heard in the courtroom. The Supreme Judge slowly rides something down, then looks up again. You have caused serious damage to your tail, which will take months to repair. You have broken your role in the story and committed violent murder. Do I look like I care? None of this is real anyways. All just stories repeating forever and ever along with the pain of the actors in them. The Supreme Judge holds up his hands, towering behind his table, then addresses the room. It seems the defendant is not clear of mind. Therefore, he is to be immediately escorted into the asylum where his head will be treated. After that, and when we fix the disaster, Mr. Redbane will most likely be returned back to his story with some precautions put into place. As the final words resonate through the room, madness in the wolf's eyes is quickly exchanged with he tries to run, to fight the guards, but there is nothing he can do. And matter not his screams and cries, as he's dragged out of the door. Everyone has a place in this. That's the last thing the wolf hears before the memories begin. Before he wakes up in the water, like so many times before, like every time in the past for what he remembers. <laughs>